Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, her grandfather made a dollhouse and then gave it to her daughter. But it seems like the dollhouse might have had something attached to it. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Oh, we love to hear your real ghost stories. So do you have one? If you do, call it in. 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. If you want to be a premium subscriber, do that. No commercials, advanced episodes, access to the archive. You could sign up a few different ways. Go through Apple Podcasts or patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes. Kathy Gordon is here today. I How's am, it going? I, well, I'm just thinking you got me going on this like dollhouse. Dollhouse. What could possibly go wrong? With a like, dollhouse with your a grandfather dollhouse. made. Like, seriously, people. Like, this is just setting you up to bring crap into your house. Like, I just I just know I'm going to wake up. The little figures are going to be moved around. What movie was that? There was some movie. Where, I know. You know when you were saying that, moving. I'm like, the whole thing just sounds like a movie. Like, there, there was some movie where that was house. happening. And they were, you know, the little figures are doing things. It gets creepier. They look worse. You know, it's like, what could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no. Well, what could Not possibly go house. wrong is something's attached to it. Oh, dolls, doll houses, they're just creepy. And you know, some oh. of them aren't. Like, if you have an adorable little Barbie one, they don't feel so yeah, creepy. Maybe, but, yeah, maybe you're Barbie. But some of those, house. like, like there oh. are, well, now, I'm not judging. It, respect to women everywhere. Y'all got your own things you're into. But there are some no, women. There could be guys into dollhouses. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, I guess so. I I don't know yeah. any, but I've known women who who was it? Oh, my friend Veronica, she puts together dollhouses as a hobby mm-hmm. and like decorates the little rooms with all kinds of little things. And people do it. People yeah. do it. But personally, it just seems like one more thing that could you could walk past and go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't exactly. have little Lori That's, sitting there. I had Lori in the kitchen when I went to bed. Exactly. How did she get to the like, living room all or of the a parlor? Sudden, the chairs are rearranged. You know, this is not where you left it. The next thing is like a decapitated head is on the kitchen table. Like you just <laughs> don't know. I'm just. <laughs> I would be scared to look at it. Furniture rearranged to a decapitated head. <laughs> Well, if I decapitated I mean, head, do you mean the little doll head or like yeah, a human yeah, 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 yeah. full size skull <laughs> with like blood dripping off the table and shit? Like I'm like the the I I could not even look at it. Like I couldn't walk by for fear I would see something horrible, right? Exactly. And even, to me, horrible could just mean something was moved, oh, you know, yeah. and that would be enough to give me a horrible, creepy feeling. Like that is not the way I left that. Well, and. Like she lives by herself, so no, that brother. would be there's nobody else that can move that stuff. Mm, now that said, exactly, she's never told me that she has had anything crazy happen. Well, it, but it's probably it, just my paranoia, yes. but I just know, I just know it. I just know it would be rearranged. Well, here is the story. It says when okay. I was growing up, my sister and I were both sensitive to things, but neither of our parents were. And neither was our brother. Here are a few things that I remember from our childhood. Dot, dot, dot. My mom was very into antiques and owned quite a few. One item she had bought at a flea market was an antique Victrola. So oh. that would be like an old-timey record player that you had to wind right. up. That's the kind that had like the horn thing on it. Mm-hmm. Wasn't Victrola had that? Um... It had a handle that you would wind up in order to play the records that came with it. The only records you could play on it were the antique records that came with it. And I remember listening to, I'm going to paper all my walls with your love letters <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> I'm going to paper Mine all was, my walls I with your love a, letters. I worked in a museum and there was a Victrola in there and then people were encouraged to try it out, right? And the song was Red Wing. And... All the time it'd be, 
Red Wing by so and so, and then they'd start singing this song, and I'd be like, God, can we find another record for this thing? But you can only play certain records on it, right? I loved the old scratchy sound of those records, which were really thick and hard, and not the thin, easily breakable records of the more recent past. And they are very thick, and they are very scratchy. Whenever my sister and I were in the living room where the Victrola was, we would glance over and the handle would be turning itself, like something or someone wanted to listen to a record. Can't happen. Mm. My sister and I shared a bedroom, and we also had an old console record player slash radio in a large cabinet in our bedroom, which my parents had gotten in the 60s. We had one of those, too. Mm-hmm. I want it again, actually. I saw one at I love a, those. I saw one at an antique store, and it was so cool. But I don't really have a place for People it. People have it those, so cool. re- and they've refurbished them, you mm-hmm. know, so they work. And, oh and my that gosh, one works. Wonderful. It had I an eight track it. player in it. Eight track. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, sometimes after we had gone to bed for the night, the radio would switch itself on. Or the record player would turn on and start playing whatever record was on the turntable, which meant somehow the arm with the needle had to lift off of its stand and get placed on the record. See, that also happened to us. We started to refer to whatever was doing this as George, and one of us would say, George, please turn off the music. We have to get up early in the morning for school, and it would switch off. I don't even remember being afraid of George, and sometimes I would just feel like someone was in my room with me, even when I was there alone. That's like an early remote. It kind of is awesome. It's like, George, no. George, turn it on. George, turn it off. Okay. My mom also has an antique wardrobe with a large mirror in the door. This wardrobe is in the largest guest room in their house, and whenever we go visit, whoever's sleeping in that room always would sleep with the door open. I even propped the door open with something heavy so it wouldn't accidentally close. When I go into that room, I won't look in the mirror of either the wardrobe or the mirror on the antique washstand, but I will avoid it if I can. Get that? that feeling. Mm -hmm. One of the other rooms was the room that my grandfather lived in when he was near the end of his life, and he split his time between my parents' house and my aunt's house. There was there was a dollhouse in that room that he made, and it was a, an exact replica of my parents' house. Oh. Mm, so it gets even creepier. When my daughter was little, she would usually sleep in that room with me, and she would say, I don't like this room. It's creepy, and that old man makes me feel scared. When my daughter was about five, my mom gave her the dollhouse, and we moved into our house in North Carolina. While we lived in that house, a lot of strange things happened, but one event stands out in my mind. My daughter, who is now 19, used to have frequent night terrors, so I would often sleep upstairs in the guest room next to her room. She would quite frequently come to get in bed with me, saying that she had a bad dream that there was a man in her room. One night I woke up because I could hear my daughter mumbling to herself, I thought, in her sleep. I couldn't hear what she was saying, But as I was about to write it off as talking in her sleep, I suddenly heard a low masculine voice from her room loudly say, Boo! Followed by my daughter's terrified scream. Oh my God, I hate that so much. I ran into her room and turned on the light and she was terrified. I put her into my bed and the next day she didn't remember it. This sort of thing would happen quite often where she would wake up screaming and not remember it the next day. She and I were talking the other day because I listened to your podcast while I'm out back cleaning my horse stalls and taking care of my horses and donkey, and they were in the back helping me. I reminded her about the boo episode, and she said, all I can remember is that I used to wake up and there would be a tall, very dark man in my room in the corner. He had on a hat and he was really tall. My oldest son, who is also sensitive and very into the paranormal, said, exactly, a shadow figure. Now that I've been listening to your show, I realized that this is what used to plague her in her childhood. Before I found your show, I had never heard of shadow figures. I've had some other really strange situations in the house we are now living in, and I am pretty sure we have a poltergeist. And maybe I'll write in again and tell you some of those. Yes, please <laughs> do. 
Thanks for taking the time to read my story. Sorry if I rambled on too long. Take care. Thanks for the service you provide to all of us weirdos who believe in this stuff. That's from Sandy. So it's interesting that the daughter, when they would sleep in the room with the dollhouse, didn't like the man in that room. Then they take the dollhouse. She got the dollhouse. What's that? Before she got the dollhouse, right? Well, they like at, they, at the at what would have been the dot her grandmother's house. Yeah, right. Sandy's and mom's the, house. Sandy's parents' house. Her grandmother's right. house. And even there, the daughter was like, I don't like this room. I don't like the man that stands in the corner. Yeah, the old man makes me feel scared. Then they take the dollhouse to their house. Right. And there's still a man in her room. And it's interesting because Sandy doesn't talk like she saw it, but she heard the boo one night, which is terrifying to it. That would be a terrifying thing to hear. Scaring small children. What is with them? It just makes me mad. It scared the shit out of me if I was Sandy because that's in your kid's room. Right. But, like, what an awful, like, what, like, that's when you walk, go busting into the room and going, okay, wait a minute, buddy. You know, this is ridiculous. It's a small child. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with people that scare small children? Well, and I wonder if it came with the dollhouse or if, if she says the house they're living in now. Now, I don't know if the house they're living in now is the same house that her daughter had those experiences at. Because it does say, I've had some other really strange situations in the house we are living in now. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's the same house as the Boo, or maybe yeah. it's a different one. Yeah, I'm not sure. And does she still have the dollhouse? I don't know. That would be I'd, a hard be one to get. And that would be one of those things that you might want to get rid of, but then sentimentally, but your grandfather well, made even- it. Well, and not even that, like, even if you could say, because let's face it, you will be the first person to just throw away stuff from moms that you think might be haunted. Well, I mean, you're like, oh, no, I'm getting rid of that. I was a haunted doll. I asked you first. You said, yes, let's throw it away. I'm like, can we throw this away? I don't even want that. Like, I did not want it in my house. I just, oh, I had bad vibes off that. And you know, the interesting thing is I got, I, I bought that cedar, brought the cedar chest to my house. I've got a place in my living room. It seems to work there fine, but we haven't opened it. But I was really worried about those dolls in there, and I've got nothing. There was a couple weird things that happened after that, but I don't think it was associated. But it's a hard thing to get rid of because grandma gave it to her. Mm -hmm. And then, like, grandma comes to the house, where's the dollhouse? You know, like, it's not like you can just. Get and it was rid an exact it. replica of her parents' house. Exactly. You know, I might say, because mom seems to like antiques and have an antiques around, you know, now that she's all grown up, why don't you take this back to your house, mom? Because the last thing I would do is tell my daughter, you know, this was your dollhouse that terrified you throughout your childhood. Would you like to why have don't it? You take it, right? <laughs> If mom likes it so much, maybe mom should take it back. (laughs) Maybe that's it. I don't know. I just don't know what you would do with it because you feel kind of like obligated to keep it. (laughs) It's like a game of hot potato with this all out. Like, you know, I don't want it. Nobody wants a doll. And I think mom thought she was being nice and giving it to the daughter, which just, you know. Because she had a little girl. It's a dollhouse. And look, your grandfather made it. But I don't know. It doesn't feel like. You know, maybe the grandfather w- thought he was, you know, maybe is that his shadow figure they're seeing? Is it the grandpa? I don't know. And the boo, is that kind of like, you know, I'm playing hide and seek with a kid and I'm being funny like boo. But it doesn't I come can't. across funny when it's the afterlife involved. <laughs> no, it, does, it, it it yeah, it's not so funny, you know, <laughs> from our side. Yeah, it's cute yeah. when you're still alive. Yeah, it but, might be hilarious when you're dead doing it. That might seem real funny, but it's not so funny when you're alive. <laughs> just remember that, everybody. Yeah. Like when everybody. we all go on to haunt our family, just be like, yeah, that was funny, but it's probably not now. Yeah, it probably won't. Yeah. Okay, here is our next story. 
Hi, this is Ashley from Nashville, Tennessee, and I was listening to your podcast at work today, and someone had talked about a story that took place in Scranton, Pennsylvania, at a Victorian house, I believe, and it completely brought back a memory that I didn't even remember until then, and it took place in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I was in college about a decade ago, and I went to go visit my mom on spring break. And she happens to still have the computer chair that my grandfather, so her father, had passed away in. And he spent a lot of time in that chair because he loved to uh, just write Western stories on his computer and watch TV at the same time. So probably, I don't know the time, maybe about 1 to 3 a.m., I had woken up and decided to go use the restroom at her house, which I don't know if I told you, was in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and she happened to live in a Victorian house. So I get up to go use the restroom. I walk through the hallway, and in this one hallway, there's an open area, like, to walk into the hallway, and you look to your right through this open area, and it goes through the kitchen, and you can see into the formal dining room, and then into the living room. In that computer chair, I saw someone falling asleep. And the next day I woke up and my grandpa did pass away. I don't know if I mentioned that. He passed away in that chair. So I, next day I woke up and I remember asking my stepfather, hey, did you happen to fall asleep in the computer chair? I saw someone sleeping in the computer chair. And, um, I remember looking at that computer chair, too, and I'm like, am I really seeing someone to sleep in that chair? And I kept standing there looking, trying to wake up, and sure enough, it was still there. It just, they acted asleep. So my grand, or my stepfather said, no, you know, I wasn't, I fell asleep up there. So I thought that was kind of weird, especially since my grandfather did pass away in that chair. I can't remember if this next part took during the same trip or on a separate trip. But I had one of those, you know, um, like I think like a Canon digital camera. And um, it was New Year's Eve, and and we took probably a slew of 10 pictures, you know, myself with my brothers and my sisters, myself with my mom, you know, just different kind of staged pictures in this living room in the Victorian house in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and every single time on these pictures, you would see four orbs. There would be two on one side, two on the other, and it would be in separate positions and all that stuff, and, you know, I'm not quick to be like, oh, it's a spirit orb, but it was in the same place every single time, not like it was dust, and I wish I still had those pictures, but they're on my face. (laughs) So I could um, show you. And shortly later, on that trip, I don't know if it was the same day or a different day, the, 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 the digital camera, it, like, completely broke. It just it would stop taking pictures. And I've heard of spirits wanting to drain or use the energy from your devices and drain it. And I was just like, this is so wacky. Like, first it was the four orbs in the same place and all the different pictures. And now the, the camera is not working properly. And I was like, well, we did cross Three Mile Island. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but it was wild. Um, deep down, I think I maybe saw my grandfather in the chair. And then deep down, I kind of feel like this might have been my mom's three brothers who had passed away and my father who was her ex-husband who passed away so that was a total of four people who would have been the closest to the, all of us and I just feel like deep down that's what it was um could have been the camera was broken though you know I don't know I would be interested to hear what you guys think all right thank you so much bye well let's talk about grandpa first um okay let's do Okay, so, because it kind of goes back to the first dollhouse story. I think if Grandpa had passed away in that computer chair, I would have no problem throwing away the chair. I, I, I think that would have just been a goner immediately. I would have gotten a new one. 
I think I'd probably have rearranged the room. I I would have gone to some effort to make things different. You know, I, I might I still want to respect Grandpa in some way in that room, obviously, but I don't need the chair. That would be too hard to look at the chair. Grandpa died in that chair. I guess it's and yet, mom's dad, there, maybe. And yet I totally get not just letting go of something right away. Um, the chair, I'd died, have no problem throwing away that chair, though. Uh, you know, when my dad died, I kept his clothes. Oh, I but still have. But I didn't have. keep them where I could see them all the time. Yeah, I still right? have his clothes. You know, I, I kept a lot of them. And finally, gosh, it was, oh, I don't know, nine, ten years later, I think I finally decided I've got to let this go. I just can't keep carrying around this bag of clothes, you know. And I finally did let let them go. I kept handkerchiefs or something that was small that I could have and keep, and I still have those. But so I kind of get, you know, that sometimes it's just hard to let go of something until you're ready to let it go. And so I can't really stand in, in judgment. It, me, myself, I'm not sure I could keep the place they died. That's you know, the like difference. That. Like I have a suit that he had. I've got his winter coat. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I figured they're not hurt anything. They're in containers and it's fine. In and you're garage. not seeing it every single no, day. No, it's in my garage. It's but, not something you're using, you uh, know. And I've got um, pieces of paper he wrote on and I don't, Yeah, I've got, but I also have that blue suitcase of his that had all kinds of memento -y things that he saved. So mm -hmm. that feels important to me. That's in yeah. the bedroom here in the closet. Mm -hmm. But if he had died in a chair, I'd I'd have to, the chair would have gone immediately, like that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I and think I she that, I think she saw her grandfather in that chair. I do too. I do too. I really now what do. do you think about the orb situation? See, now that's really hard to tell because I'm thinking without seeing the pictures, she acted like there's four orbs and they're all in the same place in all the pictures. Mm -hmm. Could that have been a malfunction in the camera, which did go belly up? Was there something mm -hmm. wrong with the camera? Was there something on the lens of the camera? Because I've seen that happen in pictures before, and it was like a long time ago when, I mean, it could still happen with your phone camera, and you've got something on the lens on the outside. That would show up mm -hmm. in every picture. Mm -hmm. But like if there was a crack in the lens or something, it would show up in every picture. So it makes me think that maybe there was something on the lens of the camera. Maybe the camera was malfunctioning. It's just so hard Already. to say. And then it quit It mm -hmm. quit shortly thereafter, right? Yeah. So that one, yeah. I can't say paranormal at all. It Maybe it was. I haven't seen the pictures. I think you'd have uh, to look at the camera, but then the camera died. Mm -hmm. Coincidence? Yeah, and we've, we've had orbs in pictures that we can't explain. I find know. it and more... And that can happen. I find it more paranormal... If you took a series of pictures and here's the four orbs in one picture, picture four has them in it again, you know, and it's random. That to me feels more paranormal than the same four orbs in the same location in every picture. Right. If they'd moved around, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, then or it would be weirder. Like the one that we took in your old, when we were all there last year in your old building in Iowa. Mm -hmm. There was that mm -hmm. picture we took. I just randomly took a picture because Lindsay had climbed the ladder. And we took some other pictures, no orbs. But that one picture had the blue orb in it. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't know what that was. There was one picture we took years ago down in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you were there. I can't. I, I wasn't to, I there, think, but I've seen the picture. Yeah, you weren't there because our cousins, that was when our cousins right. were there. And there's this ginormous orb. Now, there was a series of pictures, no orb, no orb, big-ass orb, no orb, mm -hmm. no orb. Yeah. And the big-ass orb's a big-ass orb. And we're all just eating like nothing's going on. Yeah. And so that, to me, feels more paranormal than the exact same position in the same pic in different pictures. Mm -hmm. And that the camera quit. Like, maybe there was something wrong with yeah. it. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm thinking on that. And it's hard to say without looking at him. Yeah. But so, I do think she saw our grandfather. Mm -hmm, I do, too. So if you have a real ghost story, share it with us. Call in at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. 
And if you would like to have an ad-free version of the show, you also get the advanced episodes and access to the complete archive. That will keep you busy for years. Become a premium subscriber. Do that through Apple Podcasts. Try it for three days free. You could also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening.